You know, not a ton of news, to be honest with you, in the SEC here on Wednesday, but we did have some news from the NCAA that's going to affect every single SEC team. So I thought we'd start with that. The NCAA has officially announced that they have passed the rule that has been rumored for several weeks, and that is to allow teams to sign up to seven extra players So let me break all this down for you because it's a little confusing. So this is a one-time deal, football scholarship limits. If you're not familiar, most of you I assume are though, programs are allowed to sign 25 scholarship players a given year. And typically how that you used to do that would be high school players and junior college players. And that was it. And now of course, we've got transfers. Transfers are running rampant in the sport. So now there have been coaches that instead of signing 25 high school or junior college prospects, they've been saving spots, so to speak, because you just never know who's going to pop up in the portal. I know Alabama did this last year. They held a spot or two, and that's how they got Jamison Williams and Henry Toa Toa. So they had spots for those guys. So that's just one example. But this is really becoming an issue, and that compounded by the fact you got programs like Tennessee, especially. That's the one that comes to mind. And, and South Carolina is another good example. New head coaches coming in, a lot of transfers out. You got to make sure that everybody is on an even playing field as possible. You want to have everybody at an 85 scholarship limit. So these additional scholarships, again, it's a total of seven you can add with this new rule. So theoretically, teams can sign 32 players in a given year but here's the catch you cannot go out and sign 32 high school prospects that's not how it's going to work it's going to work like this 25 as always high school junior college prospects signed during the early signing period and the traditional national signing day in february that they're going to keep it exactly the same now here's the deal after And this is key. After the early signing period, which is in mid-December, if a player transfers out of your program, you can essentially replace him with a transfer and it won't cost you an extra scholarship. So you're using one of your seven to replace a transfer with another transfer, if that makes sense. So the seven extra they're giving you, they all have to be transfers. And why that is important, so in reality... When this pass, it's interesting. I don't really know why they've done it this way, but for example, Tennessee, that's the one everyone thinks of because they were just ravaged by the transfer portal. Josh Heupel does not currently have seven extra guys that he can add via the transfer portal to go along with 25 high school, junior college signees. And here's the reason why. They're only allowing you to do this this season And the guys have to transfer out after the upcoming signing period. So I don't really understand why they've done it this way when you're trying to help a program like Tennessee, like a South Carolina. But what this is really going to do is help the next batch of coaches that come into a program and suffer all these transfers. And, of course, there's going to be players that transfer out in the SEC. We all know that. I'm not being naive. But, you know, it's interesting. I kind of wish they would allow the, the programs that have already been hit with defections from the transfer portal an opportunity right away to make up for those. But it is what it is. And also, it should be noted that this is only a one-time deal. This is not going to be every year. At least that's what they're saying right now. They're going to consider this moving forward. Here's the exact wording from the NCAA. Council members acknowledge the solution was temporary but necessary. A more permanent solution will be considered in the coming months. So again... Programs, same as always, you can sign 25 scholarship guys in the early signing period. And if you want to combine that with the National Signing Day, and then once players start transferring out at the end of the season, you can, if you lose seven guys to the portal, you can add seven guys. And it's not going to affect that 25 scholarship limit. So overall, this is a great thing. I just wish it, uh, you know, a little bit they would have it retroactive to where programs that were really hit hard. You know, you can kind of mitigate those losses if need be because 
you know, at the end of the day, it's a player safety issue. And, and hell, all these first-year coaches in the SEC could use all the help they can get already being behind the eight ball in, in so many other aspects. So nice move by the NCAA. Just wish uh, – I kind of, and I don't. I don't honestly see why you're not allowed to sign 32 high school prospects. I guess this is just more of a strictly a transfer portal issue, and they're worried about prospects getting stuck in the portal and things like that, and, and with the people jumping in and out. But I don't know if um, it's going to be as big of an issue moving forward because last time we checked, I think there's about 2,000 prospects in the portal that don't have anywhere to go. So. What is seven more spots going to help you? I I would have liked to seen this just be 32 across the board, no restrictions, 32 high school prospects if you wanted to. But, hmm, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. At the end of the day, I think this is a good thing, but I'm just not 100% sure on why they placed all these restrictions on it.